Science is a study of systematic knowledge of the physical or material world gained through observation and experimentation. Also, it typically provides students with a variety of opportunities to explore and examine real materials closely. But students who are visually impaired will typically need adaptations to access printed information that will allow the student to safely and fully access all the areas of the curriculum in science subject. It is the role of teacher of students with visual impairments to determine the adaptations that the student needs. Material adaptation needs will vary depending on the degree of functional vision, effects of additional disabilities and the task to be done. Students may use braille, large print, print with the use of optical devices, regular print, tactile symbols and or recorded materials, measuring devices and equipment etc. First, we will see the main general objectives of teaching science. These objectives also same for visually impaired students. We will see one by one. Arouse and maintain interest in nature and in the physical and social environment. Develop the habit of observation, exploration, classification and systematic way of thinking. Develop the child's power of manipulative, creative and inventive skills. Inculcate the habits of healthful living. Develop the ability to reach generalization and to apply them for solving every problem. Understand the impact of science upon one way of life. Develop interest in scientific hobbies. Inspire children by stories about scientists and their discoveries. Here it means collaboration between classroom teacher and the special teacher. Their role is essential for the upcoming curriculum in teaching science subject to the visually impaired. Collaboration can take place in a variety of ways, but ideally there should be a beginning of the year discussion about the topics for the year. What concepts are going to be introduced? What concepts will need to be reviewed? Working together as a team, they can develop strategies to create concrete experiences and adapt materials, models and charts that meet the students' unique learning and visual needs. However, since school learning relies very heavily on vision, students with this disability frequently experience academic problems. They must be exposed to a variety of experiences in science that can reasonably be explored. Although visual impairment tend to restrain individuals from highly variable experiences, overcoming barriers to experiencing activities that are unfamiliar is critical in stimulating the intellectual growth of students with visual impairments. In order to accommodate students who are visually impaired in science classrooms and laboratories, teachers should follow certain considerations and adaptations. Purposefully incorporating concepts such as size, quantity, texture, temperature, moisture, smell, taste, sound or pitch, comparison terms and empty, full is natural within our area. Incorporate positional concepts such as in, 
out on the top of underneath. It will also be natural to incorporate listening to and follow directions when performing an experiment. Begin with one step directions and progress to more difficult two step directions. Sighted children learn many things through observation of the world around them and by watching the actions of other people. But students with visual impairments do not benefit from this incidental learning and require more direct instruction and hands-on experiences to develop a complete picture of objects and concepts. The general suggestions on teaching and adapting lessons for students with visual impairments are preview the concepts thought within a lesson before discussion or class presentation. Allow extra time for exploration of materials. Multiple exposures to the same material is desirable. Provide students with all materials in all accessible formats such as braille, large print, digital, tactile or audio. Describe the object or concept using consistent vocabulary and make comparisons in terms of size, texture and behaviors to objects and things the student is already familiar with. Provide clear, simple, tactile graphics or diagrams with each lesson. Provide hands-on materials whenever possible. Multi-sensory lessons provide both auditory and graphical materials for greater understanding. Always present hands-on materials for a lesson in a tray to keep the materials within the reach of the child. Encourage students to use their available senses like residual vision, smell, hearing, touch, taste to explore their environments and materials. Provide as many opportunities for experiential learning as possible such as field trips to museums with hands-on exhibits. Unnecessary obstacles in the room should be eliminated and visually impaired students should be informed if the room arrangement has been altered or if any temporary obstacle. Provide for the translation of textual materials into braille and adaptive electronic media. Assign a typical student to describe in detail visual representations such as videos, slides and overhead transparencies to the visually impaired student. Use the student's name when addressing him or her. Provide numerous laboratory science experiences. Allow students to manipulate relevant scientific objects, models and other materials when possible. The visually impaired students should be seated closest to the sound source. Likewise, visually impaired students should sit in an area of the classroom with the best lighting. Positioning a student's desk so that the light comes over the shoulder's non-dominant hand helps reduce glare. If possible, desks and tables should be arranged so that ample room exists for visually impaired students to move with canes. Cane is a mobility aid for visually impaired. If the classroom arrangement changes in any way, the visually impaired student should be given the opportunity to practice moving about in the revised environment. A wide variety of commercially produced three-dimensional models and manipulatives are available for science students, whether the students are visually impaired or not. Elaborate and intricate models of plant and animal cells internal structures of wombs and frogs, steps of mitosis and meiosis, types of bacteria and cross sections of trees can be purchased. 
If models are to be used by visually impaired students, care should be taken that the components are presented three dimensionally rather than through color codes. Demonstrations are an integral component of science instruction, but often must be modified for visually impaired students. The teacher should place more emphasis on oral descriptions of scientific processes rather than textual representations of the demonstration so that visually impaired students might gain a mental picture of what is taking place. Academic accommodations can make learning opportunities accessible to students with disabilities. The best accommodations result when teachers, students and support staff together in a creative, resourceful, collaborative way. Examples of commonly used accommodations for students with low vision and visually impaired as class assignments are available in electronic format. Computers are equipped to enlarge screen characters and images. Handouts, lab signs and equipment labels are available in large print. Seating is available near the front of the class. TV monitor is connected to a microscope to enlarge images. Adaptive lab equipment is available. Computers are equipped with an optical character reader, voice output and braille screen display and printer output. Lab signs and labels are posted in both large print and braille. Lecture notes, handouts and texts are available in audio, braille or electronic format. Raised line drawings and tactile representations are available as an alternative to graphic images. Verbal descriptions of visual aids are provided. Warning signals are auditory as well as visual. Three-dimensional models are beneficial to all students when learning about science. This is particularly true for students with visual impairments. Students should be provided with models that they can touch, explore and examine. Although two-dimensional tactile graphics can be beneficial and useful, it is best to start with either the real object or when this is not possible, a three-dimensional object can be used. The ideal for students to first explore real objects, then compare those to a model. The tactile graphics consist of raised line drawings that are intended to supplement the graphics in a student's adapted textbook. It depicts objects, concepts and relationships that are covered in nearly all science textbooks. The drawings use several types of lines and textures as well as different heights. The lines and the areas with the highest relief signify the most important features in a diagram. Visual material needs to be accompanied by a verbal description. Read overheads allowed and describe the content of slides. If we are showing a video, describe the action or any explanatory text that is crucial to understanding the presentation should be narrated. If there are multiple speakers such as panel, have each speaker introduce himself or herself to the audience so that the speaker's voices are keyed for the audience as to their identity. Handouts should be available in large print, audio, digital and or braille formats. If this is not possible prior to presentation, note the various individual's preferred formats 
and then make the materials available to them within a short time after the presentation. Paid or volunteer reader or writers can assist a student with visual impairment with text, materials and library readings. By verbally spelling out a new or technical word, it will be helpful for student with visual impairment as well as for other students. Whiteboards can be used to enlarge pictures for students with low vision. All colored objects used for identification related to a lesson, experiment or other directions should be labeled with a braille label marker or otherwise tactually coded. Describe in detail visual occurrences, visual media and directions including all pertinent aspects that involve sight like chalkboard or whiteboard writing. Use a sighted narrator or descriptive video to describe aspects of videos or laser discs. Have lesson directions and class handouts available in braille or in large print as needed by the student at the same time his peers are working. Have tactile 3D models, raised line drawings or thermoforms available to supplement drawings or graphics in a tactile format when needed. Describe the tactile diagram to the student and teach him the features of the diagram. Wherever is possible, use actual objects for three-dimensional representations. Modify instructions for auditory or tactile presentation. Use raised line drawings for temporary tactile presentations. Make all handouts and assignments available in an appropriate form. Example, regular print, large print, braille or recorded depending on the student's optimal mode of communications. Issues of safety are often first priority concerns for teachers of visually impaired science students because the science laboratory can be a dangerous environment for all occupants. Therefore, laboratory safety should be the first topic discussed in all science classes. Particular precautions should be in place in laboratories in which visually impaired students are working. First, teachers can arrange a time for visually impaired students to tour the class science class laboratory. These students need to become familiar with the science lab environment so that they can move about the room with ease and locate necessary equipment and materials. Describe and tactually or spatially familiarize the student with the lab and all equipment to be used. Consider alternative activities or exercises that can be utilized with less difficulty for student but has the same or similar learning outcomes or objectives. Use an enlarged activity script, directions or readings for a low vision student. For use the tactile 3D models. Make all handouts and assignments available in the appropriate form for the student. Example, regular print, large print, braille or tape depending on the student's optimal mode of communication. Assistance may be needed for converting certain laboratory materials from a visual to a tactile format. Familiarize the student with a visual impairment on the lab equipment to be used if needed before the activity. Allow more time for the laboratory activities if needed. Always try to keep materials, supplies and equipment in the same places. Use a video microscope or similar device to keep the student with low vision. Examine images from a microscope. Be sure that all solid and liquid chemicals are in proper containers with braille 
and large print labels placed in a specific location in the room. Provide means for the acquisition and or recording of data in an appropriate medium for the student. Plastic lab wear is a safer option for students with visual impairments to use when possible. Make equipment available that the student with a visual impairment can access in interpreting and understanding the results of laboratory exercises. Use a hot plate for heating instead of Bunsen burner when possible. Label materials, supplies and equipments with regular print, large print or braille as appropriate for the student with a visual impairment. Pair the student with a visual impairment with a sighted student. Then have the sighted peer describe the activities and outcomes as they are observed. A closed circuit television can be used to magnify images. Use assistive technology devices to provide auditory scanning of laboratory materials, written directions or symbols. When working on circuits, be sure to allow the student with a visual impairment to use a buzzer instead of a light to complete the circuit. Prior to the enrollment of a student with a visual impairment in class, obtain laboratory equipment that has the ability to produce adaptive outputs such as a large screen, print materials or various audio output devices. When using pipettes, the use of a colored index card or paper behind the tube as background can enhance the contrast for a student with low vision. Use fixed or adjustable pipettes to help measuring liquids for experimentation. Be sure that all electrical cords are taped down to the floor to avoid tripping and falling or getting caught by canes. We can see some of the expected things that can done by the teacher. To work themselves and be able to perform at the near perfection level, the speed of the achievement need not be a very high level, but the skill competency must be high. To analyze the operation into micro operations and into micro skills, to explain each operations and to explain the experts or even wrong operations and its outcome and how to avoid such things. To take necessary precaution if there may be any safety hazard or danger. To organize the work environment and work setup. To organize the work of the group and supervise individually. To tackle any untoward deviation. To observe and record individual students progress including visually impaired students progress. To help them to evaluate their own work and provide necessary correction. Field experience is very helpful for the children with visual impairment in learning science. Make all handouts, safety information and assignments available in an appropriate form. Consider alternate activities or exercises that can be utilized with less difficulty for the student but has the same or similar learning objectives. Have an orientation and mobility instructor or sighted guide accompany on field trips can be used. Do detailed description and narration of objects seen in science centers, museums and field activities. The use of a laser cane can be useful in assisting the student in unfamiliar surroundings. Make arrangements for tactile examinations if touch is not normally permitted. Say in a museum, then contact the curator. For tactile access to a museum, display items. Research work can also be done by visually impaired students in science. 
some of the adaptations are involved like review and discuss with the student the steps involved in a research activity. Think about what step or steps may be difficult for the specific functional limitations of the student and jointly devise accommodations for that student. Use appropriate lab and field strategies according to the nature of the research. Various braille devices and assistive technology can be used to assist students with visual impairments when reading. Suggest that the student use a recording device to record the various activities. If necessary, have a sighted peer describe the actions or reactions of the test subjects or materials. Provide access to proper recording devices in the preferred medium for the student to take field notes and report out findings. Allow student to create tactile graphs and diagrams to report data. Present examinations in a form that will be unbiased. Unbiased means impartial to visually impaired students. Ask the student for the approach he or she finds to be most accessible. Make tests available in the appropriate form of the student. Example, regular print, large print, braille or tape depending on the student's optimal mode of communication. Allow more time if needed. Allow the student to record answers using assistive technology when needed. Make use of the visual magnification or dark line paper answer sheets for written responses. Be sure to understand the accessibility requirements and recommendations of the state before tests are given. Provide assistance with proofreading written work. Encourage the use of spell check and grammar assistive devices when appropriate to the course. Convert exam papers in their usual format. Consider alternatives to any assignments which depend on visual communication. Making accommodations to a test environment will afford visually impaired students the same opportunities for academic success and high scores as those without a disability. It is important to check with the student to see what arrangements need to be made in order for them to complete their test efficiently. Finally, the research also indicates that students with exceptionalities such as visual impairments are more academically successful when they are included in the regular classroom setting and have opportunities to engage in active learning. Therefore, science educators or teachers must address their needs by motivating visually impaired students in science and making accommodations in the laboratory and classroom, inexpensive supplies used creatively with a commitment to the full participation of all students can create a positive classroom experience for students who are visually impaired. Thank you.